begin today's presentation, it's good to set a, a baseline, a uh, data-driven baseline based on some of the, the peer monitor data sets we have access to here at Thomson Reuters uh, to really paint a picture of uh, a rear view perspective of the, the past two years in terms of support staffing ratios, as well as through the mid-year point of this year, um, ref reflections in the expenditure data, as well as lawyer staffing that we've seen um, in the evolution of professional staffing models at law firms as a result of the pandemic. Um, to begin today, we're going to rely uh, on the Peer Monitor Annual Staffing, staffing Ratio Survey, um, take a look at professional staff trends pre-pandemic, uh, specifically in 2018 as well as in 2019. Now, as I mentioned, professional staffing at law firms has been undergoing some fundamental changes in the past two years. Uh, in fact, when looking at the shift in staff to lawyer ratio by function area, some of these trends become immediately apparent. Um, for starters, the ratio of support staff to lawyers declined slightly in both 2018 as well as 2019. Uh, this decrease was largely fueled by uh, declines in two function areas in particular, those being secretarial and word processing and operations. Legal secretaries and word processors have decreased in ratio relative to lawyers by more than 3% each of the last two years, a trend that is expected to gather more steam in 2020 and beyond. This decline comes as technological advances have made it possible to do more with less, as well as the advent of AI tools, which have made revising or proofreading documents less labor intensive. Further, positions in this function area are some of the most likely to be outsourced by firms as a cost saving measure. Now, the decline in operations staff gained momentum in 2019, whereas there was only a slight decline in the preceding year. Operations staff include copy center or mailroom personnel, record staff, facilities and office services, reception and catering, as well as procurement and travel FTEs. Copy center and mailroom, as well as facilities and office services roles, are also outsourced with increasing frequency at firms in the market. This has greatly contributed to the decline in staff in this area overall. The global pandemic in 2020 and the increase in work from home prevalence, as well as the significant decrease in live events and travel is expected to largely drive an even greater decrease in staffing in this function area in 2020 and beyond. Now, on the other hand, other function areas such as practice group operations, recruiting and talent and executive management have seen a large uptick in their own staffing ratios. Executive management growth has been driven by a relatively small number of hires in a function area that has the lowest staffing out of all function areas examined with the largest proportional uptick occurring at firms further down market. On the other hand, practice group operation professionals have grown by eight and more than 13% in prevalence in 2018 and 2019 respectively, where recruiting and talent professionals have grown by 3.8 and nearly 10% in 2019. And the increase has been more ubiquitous across firms in all segments of the market. On the subsequent two slides, we'll explore in greater detail which roles in these function areas are driving overall growth. Now, looking more closely at recruiting and talent lawyer ratio growth by role, we see that the two main drivers of growth in this function area in both 2018 as well as 2019 were lateral lawyer hiring and diversity and inclusion professionals. Employees in lateral hiring roles include those responsible for planning and executing the hiring of lateral lawyers, which includes conducting research, uh, working with partners to better understand department needs, and communicating those needs to legal search firms. Firms have pursued growth strategies fueled by lateral hiring and the books of business brought with these new lateral hires with increased frequency over the last two years. But there is some discussion on the length of employment required for a positive net return on investment of those hired. Firms in the market have anecdotally reported varying levels, varying levels of success with lateral hires. It'll be interesting to see just how large the corresponding drop-off we see in 2020 associated with the pandemic and hiring slowdown. Now, diversity and inclusion has been an area of increased focus for firms and society at large for the better part of the last decade. An increased emphasis on DNI and not only the legal market, but broader economy has driven a significant increase in professional staff tasked with improving these metrics at firms in this area. DNI professionals at firms oversee diversity goals. They identify and evaluate current best practices in diversity. They help to develop new training and education in diversity and inclusion as well as they serve as liaisons between the firm and outside organizations who specialize in these areas. Now, studies have shown increasingly that employee satisfaction and performance has a direct correlation to higher DNI metrics at the firm they work for. And this is clearly evidenced by growth of more than 25% in 2018 and 45% in 2019 in staffing and roles in this area. 
Overall, recruiting and lawyer hiring has, however, significantly slowed thus far into 2020, as we'll discuss later in the presentation. Many who were staffed in this area in 2019 were possibly furloughed in the midst of the pandemic. It'll be closely monitored to see the extent of the corresponding drop in the 2020 figures by year's end. Now, the growth in practice group operations professionals has been less consistent between the two years, with the largest drivers of growth shifting between roles in 2018 and 2019. In 2018, pricing specialists were responsible for the largest growth of roles in this function area and increased by an average ratio of nearly 25%. The figure was nearly halved in 2019, but with significant growth continuing in this role nonetheless. Now, pricing specialists include personnel that perform analysis in the support of pricing, uh, pricing alternatives. They also respond to client requests and develop pricing solutions. And with the continued rise in the prevalence of alternative fee arrangements for matters in the market, it's no surprise that this, there's fast growth in this area for professional staff. But now by 2019, there were other major drivers of growth in terms of practice group operation professionals. Legal project managers, which include management support, staffing and strategic analysts, and matter oversight professionals, had the largest growth in 2019. In fact, the average ratio of professionals to lawyers increased by more than 35% in 2019, which was triple the growth percentage in the preceding year. Another area in the past year with similar growth levels was that of other practice support professionals, which includes clerks, case and records assistants, advocates, specialists, or any other personnel supporting practice groups other than litigation whose costs are generally not billable to clients. Overall, all the roles included in the PGO function area have grown in each of the past two years. But again, it's yet unclear to what extent the pandemic will affect staffing in this area moving forward. Now to shed some insight into 2020 uh, thus far performance, uh, it's useful to use the peer monitor data to look at uh, lawyer staffing trends uh, as well as trends in the expenditure, both in the in a direct and overhead sense. Lawyer growth in the US law firm market since 2011 has averaged 1.5% per quarter. Now, more recently, there has been a steady rise in lawyer hiring since around the second quarter of 2018. In fact, with eight consecutive quarters of increased increasing levels of lawyer headcount growth in the market. Now, prior to the global outbreak of COVID-19 virus and the associated economic shutdowns and stay-at-home orders, Lawyer growth in the first quarter had climbed to the second highest point in the last decade. In fact, the average firm in the market had increased their lawyer headcount by 2.7% relative to the first quarter of the previous year. Since then, however, there has been a rapid slowdown and in many cases, cessation of lawyer hiring. In fact, many firms by the end of the second quarter and onward have transitioned from a hiring fees to actively decreasing lawyer headcount. Now through August of the current third quarter, lawyer headcount has all but seeded the gains accrued over the preceding 12 months, and now sits at only 0.7% higher than in the third quarter of 2019. Now that since March, firms have begun slowing and in many cases decreasing their lawyer headcount, it's clear that not all lawyer titles have been affected equally. As one might expect, the primary target of layoffs and furloughs in the lawyer accounts has been in the associate ranks. So much so that associate headcount growth has gone from nearly a high of 4% on average in January of this year to actually contracting by August, a slide of about 4.7% over the last eight months. Partners, on the other hand, have emerged relatively unscathed thus far. Partner headcount growth has remained relatively constant since January and has hovered between 0.7% in the first month of the year and 0.6% by August. Early indications from September have shown that firms have continued to decrease headcount with associates remaining the largest target of these reductions in that month. In terms of practice areas, similar to lawyer titles, not all have been affected to the same extent. However, unlike with lawyer titles, all practices have shown a decrease in headcount from March to August of this year. Bankruptcy and labor and employment lawyers have been the least affected thus far by reductions. This stands to reason as these are two of our better performing practices so far in 2020. In fact, with bankruptcy being the only practice with positive growth, it's averaging uh, with the average firm working in this practice area increased their hours by 4.1% so far this year. Now, of the 17 major practice areas tracked by peer monitor, 
13 have reduced their lawyer staffing by more than 1% over the last six months. Further, eight of those 17 practice areas have had decreases of more than 2% over the same time period. The largest practice areas by proportion of hours worked, which are litigation and corporate, and they together make up more than half of all hours tracked, have reduced lawyer headcount on average by 2.3% and 1.9% respectively so far. As firms are, were faced with demand uncertainties, they've rapidly reduced lawyer headcount on average across the board. Now on the following slides, we're gonna examine closer the corresponding decrease in expenditure that associated, these, associated with these cuts. As I mentioned, pivoting to take a closer look at expenditures, the decrease in staffing for both lawyers as well as professional staff so far this year is immediately apparent, shown in both our direct and overhead expenditure growth declines. Direct expenditure, which is essentially just lawyer compensation, has, con has contracted on a month-to-month -month basis directly in line with the headcount reductions. By August, firms have decreased to spend on lawyer compensation by 6% on average when compared with August of the year prior. The decline, which is outpacing the headcount reductions in terms of percentage, has also been influenced by payroll forgiveness loans. Now, the decline in overhead expenditure is much more jarring at first glance. It is not entirely comprised of compensation as direct expenditures are. Overhead expenses have declined each month since March, including reaching a low of more than 15% contraction month, of, month over month in May of this year. Overhead categories which have had the most significant declines include staff compensation, which is our largest area by proportion of total spend, marketing and business development, which has declined by more than two thirds in 2020 compared with 2019, very much in line with the widespread cancellation of live events, and recruiting, which is on average nearly 80% lower than the year prior. On the final two slides here, we're gonna take a closer look at staff compensation and recruiting in particular, and the extent to which reductions have occurred in each segment of the market as tracked by Peer Monitor. So in terms of professional staff compensation, specifically all three segments have reduced their spend by at least 5% by August, a strong indicator of the extent to which layoffs and furloughs thus far amongst the support staff ranks have taken hold. And while second hundred firms have been the most aggressive in staff compensation reduction so far, this was also the first segment on average to reduce year over year spend levels, doing so by April, which was one month prior to the average midsize or AMLAW 100 firm. Further, they've had the largest contraction in each of the subsequent five months. By August, have spent on average 10% less on staff compensation than they did in August of 2019. Somewhat interestingly, mid sized firms have actually reduced their spend the least out of the three segments. And finally, to tie in the decreases in overhead spend back to lawyer hiring, it's quite interesting to look closer at the average firm's recruiting expenses thus far into 2020. While it seems firms had, to, had, a significant slow, had significantly slowed recruiting by January already, with the average firm reducing their spend in this area by around 30%, the pandemic has driven even larger declines since. Segments have reduced their recruiting spend to varying degrees, but all three have sharply reduced since March. And by, by August, the average firm in the market has reduced their recruiting expenses by nearly 70%, with just a range of 2% between all three segments. Again, early indicators for September show that lawyer headcount has slipped even further into the contraction territory, and one would expect recruiting spend to reflect that as well. Now, barring any major medical breakthroughs in 2020, it's hard to imagine a significant uptick in hiring and thus recruiting expenses until 20, early 2021 at the latest. <laughs> 